Okay, we are live, I think. Yep. Yeah. So we're live for our 77th installment of Nance and Office Hours. Uh, we have a very uh, special episode today because we're going to be doing a quick run through of our new release, Nance and Connect. We just put a tweet out about it. So if you also want to read uh, about it as well, you can go check that out. Um, it's our web free powered messaging tool and Paul will be giving some more details on it shortly and a bit of a demo. Uh, and then as well as this, I've got Jake with me today and we're going to try to evaluate, like make sense of the kind of mayhem that we've been seeing over the last seven days, probably more than seven days now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, GM, thank you for joining us. Uh, drop your GMs in the chat. And before we start, if you're new to Office Hours, every Wednesday we do a Nats and Chill session. We show new features. So today is a good example of that. Uh, we answer some questions from you. So make sure you drop any questions that you've got in the chat. I'll try and uh, keep track of that. And then we also do some alpha leaks. So make sure that you subscribe, turn your notifications on, uh, and if you'd like to try Nansen for free, uh, you can use the link below uh, to sign up to Nansen Lite. So, Paul, I will share your screen first. I think we're going to go through uh, kind of what Nansen Connect is and the amazing features that it has. Yeah, thank you, um, Nansen intern. Um, <laughs> Yeah, super, super excited. Um, we've just released what what we think is pioneering for Web3. So I just want to talk you through it. We've literally just released it. So I'm going to jump off the call pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, can you see my screen? All right, it should say yeah. Nance and Connect. Join the beta. Um, first of all, is that connect.nansen.ai. And if you go there and you're a Nance and Standard user, or if you have an NFT in one of the collections that we've included for launch, you'll be able to enter the app and have a look at it as it's being built in beta. And um, yeah, I just want to show off some key features today. Please jump in um, mm -hmm. if there's anything you have questions about. So it's a web-free powered messaging tool. And, and that's super important because one of Nansen's core values is that we pull everything on chain in real time. So in many ways, we're like the most natural place to build the next identity and social layer um, on the blockchain. We also think it's super cool that you can just message anyone and have a conversation on the blockchain. Our main feature here is that it's end-to-end -end encrypted. So when you DM another wallet and they reply, it becomes encrypted. From that moment forwards, um, no one can see it. So the first thing you have to do is connect your wallet. Um, we've got a really big warning here for any Nansen users. As it is beta, you've got to go to the account management page and make sure that your wallet is connected to your main account, otherwise you might create a second account. Um, so that's a really key warning for anyone who's a Nansen user. Then click Connect Wallet, and it will ask you to sign. And if, you're, if it's the first time, it will ask you to decrypt as well. Actually, I think that happens on the second time. And then you're in. So there's no transaction sent to the blockchain there. That's just verifying that you're the owner of the wallet. Once you're in, there's some really cool features that I just, just want to go through. The, the first one is we've got NFT gated communities. So what this means is I can't enter, even as a Nansen dev, I can't enter these communities. Um, even as a Nansen employee, you have to own the NFTs to enter them. So that's a web-free first community. And I know this feature might be available on other products, but what we're doing here is slightly different. We're trying to build this from the ground up with the communities and with web-free in mind to make it fit for purpose. Um, and we think this is a great way of kind of bootstrapping networks and saying, hey, why don't you come into our product? Why don't you have a go at messaging each other? And here's a few people you might be interested in. You'll see right at the top there, there's the Nansen channel, and this is where I get super excited. Um, um, Nansen labels are the very core of Nansen. We have a whole team coming up with these heuristics based on what a wallet does on chain. And some in certain circles, they're quite famous. I think smart money has become our trademark, and these are savvy users. There's not many in the world, and... If you're a smart money, it means you've made some really good investment decisions. Um, it's a really exclusive channel where you can't buy your way in. 
you can't get a subscription for your way in. You have to be smart money. Um, so when you connect to that channel, you'll be able to see and chat to other smart money holders. It's To me, it's the holy grail of alpha channels. It's um, it's something I've kind of thought about for a long time, but, but now we've got it. There's a few more accessible ones here. And we want to add a few more over time, but just for launch, we've got Airdrop, Airdrop Pro. People are super good at airdrops consistently. Um, we've got an announcements channel. Rare NFT collector, which are people with high trading volume and above. We've got a millionaire club for anyone that's an on-chain millionaire. We've got Medium Dex Trader, which is one of our famous labels if you've been with Nansen for a while. People who trade on DEXs a lot. Any NFT blue chip holder from our NFT indexes, we've got a special channel for them. And of course, the GM channel, where you can just log in and say GM. Let's get the, back. That's Sorry. The, channel. <laughs> the GM one. <laughs> a lot of uh, good information there. <laughs> Yeah, I've got the. Me I'm not going to go into the medium dex trader one because I think that's part of our product. It's super secret unless you have that label. Um, so coming back to that idea of labels, one really interesting thing here is when you first log in. I didn't show you this because I've already got an account, but when you first log in, you get to choose your label, but you can't just make up your own username. Again, we're going for a sense of immutable identity, so it either has to be an ENS name which you can pick a few from here, or you can use your wallet address or our Nansen labels, which are based on your behavior. So for example, I've got a few here, medium dex trader, um, sandwich attack victim, deployer of a contract. And this really unlocks some of the potential for this product and what we're really aiming this at, which is the ability to verify who you're talking to. So often on Twitter, you might see an influencer shilling something and selling it. With Nansen Connect, you get to verify their wallet directly. So when I'm chatting to someone in a DM and they're telling me to buy something, I can watch what they're doing in real time and see if they're actually selling it, see where, see if their kind of mouth is where the money is, the other way around. Um, so for example, I can click this wallet here, go to view wallet, have a look at their token balance, have a look at how many NFTs they've got, even jump through to the dashboards themselves that Nansen have where I can take a real deep dive on what they're doing, set a smart alert on their tradings or put them in my watch list, um, have a look at what NFTs they're buying um, and that you actually see a few hidden features here that we might release in the future. So these are some of the things I'm, I could probably talk all day on it but I'm super excited about. Um, you can message any wallet so like I can just put any ENS name in here or wallet address and then they have to approve it to receive that. When you go into the groups, once you're in the groups, you can also see who else is in there and connect with them directly. So, th so the whole purpose here is to really have that high signal, private place where you can DM other people. But it's got to start with a community because this is crypto and we have to have something in common when we connect with people. Um, so that's a brief overview. I don't know if I missed anything there at all. I don't think so, yeah. I think it's kind of, like we said, it's in a early release, uh, so we're going to be kind of testing things out. We want to get feedback as well, I'm sure, um, and we'll be making improvements, like, along the way. Uh, and, yeah, we have, like, quite a few kind of announcements coming out about it uh, over today and over tomorrow as well. Uh, if you want to learn more, feel free to kind of reach out to any of us. We'll be able to answer some, uh, answer some questions, especially Paul. Uh, will be the man you want to ask, uh, maybe me, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so it's really, really exciting, and I'm sure we'll talk a lot more about it kind of over time, and probably in these office hours episodes as well uh, coming up, so yeah, thank you so much, Paul, uh, I don't think we have any questions, unless Jake, you want to ask something? <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, I'd be curious, like, what happens if uh, you stop becoming smart money? <laughs> Are you, do you still have access to that? You're out. You're out. That's <laughs> you know, I, smart money doesn't want to talk to the dumb money. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> um, but I mean, really, over time, we, we want to add these custom controls and breakout groups so people can, like, you, you can decide. Um, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a, a, someone really well known who's revealed their wallet 
wants to set a threshold for who can talk to them so it isn't just a constant spam of noise and this is the first step towards creating those those spaces mm. yeah definitely well thank you so so much i know you're very busy today uh you're like kind of helping with this whole launch so thank you for coming on uh and kind of guiding us through it hopefully that was helpful for everyone watching and everyone that will watch so yeah have a good rest of your day i know it's going to be very busy uh thank you for coming on yeah, thanks. I'm going to jump back to it. So I'll see you later. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Now you are left with me and dumb money, Jake. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the wallet tag I'm I'm really pushing for. I think, uh, yeah, for me, I, I am one of those wallets you do not want to follow. So <laughs> maybe there's some potential alpha in counter trading my wallet. So yeah. yeah. That might be me as well. Uh, <laughs> form of smart money. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's share your screen. Um, and I think we're going to get into kind of looking at various token movements and uh, stuff that's kind of gone on over the last few days. Um, it's a time to take a breath in this market. <laughs> There's a lot going on um, and a lot going on with kind of big players. You know, of course, free AC is the kind of talk of the town today yesterday or the day before it was celsius um and then yeah it's probably going to be someone else soon so yeah we're going to kind of look at the kind of uh, main tokens that have been moving about so staked eth uh stable coins uh anything like that basically and hopefully kind of paint a picture of what's going on so jake do you want to start with anything staked eth maybe yeah yeah totally um yeah i guess i kind of going off here you kind of look at like okay it looks like smart money is pretty bullish and some Aave USDC uh, with, and then, you know, some Aave staked ETH. So yeah, it looks like it's just the majors and stables across the board besides, you know, BitDAO, which comes at, you know, 3 million, which is, I guess, yeah, pretty negligible compared to the top three holdings. But um, yeah, kind of scrolling down, like um, looking through the smart money token inflows, we can kind of see, yeah, a bunch of Aave uh, staked ETH inflows to smart money. So um, yeah, we can kind of like click into token god mode here. I actually prefer sometimes um, when kind of looking at like specific trends of a given token, I actually really like looking at token movements. I think it's a very underrated dashboard. Um, so I'm actually just going to head to token movements real quick. Um, I'll open it up here. It's under diligence, token movements. And then you just input the token. Uh, state these. And then if, um, not sure if anyone has realized, but... Um, yeah, before when you would type in some uh, token, uh, sometimes like the actual results here would, would kind of switch, but that's actually all resolved. So it's super, super nice. So highly recommend uh, checking it out. Nice little bug result. And um, yeah, I guess we can like, what do you think? We kind of look over the last two weeks. Um, I think this is like why I've looked a lot at token movements over the last few days, because you can kind of set that time period. Uh, it's been like one of the most helpful um, tabs. Yeah, totally, totally. It's like, I think, yeah, you can come to the same conclusions. Like, I think there's like multiple ways of finding things, which is the beautiful thing. But I think uh, for me personally, I really like looking at token movements to kind of get an aggregate flow, um, which is really, really nice over a predefined, you know, time period. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess like a uh, talk of the town, uh, I think we're seeing, you know, three arrows here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we see, you know, uh, outflows of 73,000 uh, of a staked ETH over these last two weeks. So yeah, that you know that looks actually pretty interesting. So we could probably drill down into that wallet. Um, yeah, we'll just like look at wallet profile for token there and see. Yeah, see what's going on with this specific you know wallet. It's a lot easier to calculate USD value now because ETH is basically one thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the beautiful thing. And also too now, like as we go down, it's less USD value. Um, so each yeah. each each uh, you know. 10% uh, downswing is you know, slightly less than USD, um, mm -hmm. but the pain is still there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I'm not sure if, this, like, yeah, I think this is just like one of the wallets. I haven't checked out all of their wallets with mm -hmm. ETH, um, but it looks like this one's relatively new, having first received it in, you know, literally a month ago today. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think this chart is pretty nice. Um, and yeah, you can kind of see this huge decline um, here, so let's check that out and scroll down. Um, yeah, we'll just sort by time. I think that helps a lot. Um, and here, there's not, yeah, so there's only 11 rows. So 
Um, here it looks like, I'm assuming the zero address is depositing um, stake ETH to Aave. So we'll just drill down by clicking into the transaction thing there. Um, and yeah, it looks like they're supplying stake ETH to Aave. Um, so yeah, it looks like they were doing that quite a bit um, up until, yeah, June 6th. And then from there, I'm assuming, yeah, this looks like they're probably withdrawing it. We could, uh, we could check it out. So it looks like they've, yeah, withdrawn a lot. I think, this, I'm not sure if this is all or all, it's just one specific instance. But yeah, you can see they're kind of, yeah, withdrawing their staked ETH um, in Aave. So yeah, I think like uh, this one wallet, I, I, you know, we just found from token movements. Um, I guess kind of goes to show maybe like the little, uh, yeah, the FUD and contagion that's been going around, I think, crypto Twitter these past couple of days. Yeah, I, I think maybe I don't understand it right. Um, haven't looked at Twitter like too much today, which is probably surprising. Um, but I think, yeah, they're kind of depositing Aave and then taking loans out on um, stables. And yeah, their liquidation price was like $1,000 uh, ETH. Um, but I'm pretty sure, yeah. So what would they have to do to that? They'd have to add um, more collateral, basically. Um, so it looks like that's kind of what they're doing. I'm pretty sure someone will come in to support them, hopefully. I don't really want free AC to go down. Um, <laughs> Where? Yeah, Where? It's, um... <laughs> I don't think it's going to be the best uh, outcome for the market. But yeah, it's, it's super interesting to kind of see what they do. Um, and they have, like you said, that, that wallet's quite new. Um, yeah. But like the thing with free AC is they have so many, like it's, it's really hard to track all of their movements. Um, so I think we have quite a few labeled, maybe like, 10 plus, I guess. Uh, but even then, you kind of have to go deeper into it and look like where are they transferring to? Because often they just kind of move to a completely fresh wallet and then just carry on from there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, this is definitely a really fresh wallet. So uh, it's definitely not, uh, yeah, definitely not like an aggregate view of really what's going on with uh, Three Arrows and the state these positions. So yeah, totally agree there. Um, yeah, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, like you were mentioning, um, yeah, like posting more collateral. I think, uh, yeah, having your liquidation price on chain uh, for everyone to see is definitely um, an interesting scenario on the downside. Um, so, yeah, I'm really hoping everyone is okay. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, so I guess... Like, <laughs> oh, we look at um, stable coins now as well. Uh, so yeah. we kind of staked ETH. Uh, stable coins, I know we want to look at like Celsius uh, token... We've got quite a few kind of topics, uh, like USDD, uh, yeah. State Eve, yeah, USDC, I guess, uh, USDC, okay. all of them I think people would be interested in. All right. So, yeah, we can maybe do like Stablecoin Master. Yeah. Or you can just go Token God Mode for each one. Uh, but yeah, both. All right. All right. We'll, we'll do a quick uh, browse through. Um, yeah, no, I, I like toggling and moving to both. Um, but yeah, I guess like, yeah, I we can go to Notable Wallets and see what's yeah, what's significant is happening over the last week or two. Um, you can find some interesting, you know, balance changes or movements. So, you know, here we see the top uh, stablecoin balance changes. Um, looks to be mostly exchanges. Ave. Yeah, um, not too much. So to, yeah. So the good thing about like if you have a kind of higher tier subscription, uh, I think it's VIP uh, upwards, right? Uh, you can filter them. So these tables, uh, you can then filter for like smart money um, yeah, to see one of these uh, large transactions. So like from my intern account, that's kind of what I do um, so that I can see them. Uh, Free AC, Alameda, all these type of funds, uh, you can then track their like large uh, transactions in the last seven days by kind of just filtering by, yeah, that emoji. Um, <laughs> the emoji. Um, yeah, so, and then this is the filter button here. Yeah, no, totally. And I think that's like super powerful because you can actually look at front, like um, like f where funds flow to and from smart money. Um, so if you want to see like where smart money is sending uh, their stuff, I mean, uh, obviously we see a lot of Alameda here. Um, and yeah, here we have like three arrows, et cetera, et cetera. This is definitely like a pretty interesting way of drilling down on the data. Ooh, where did that go? Yeah. But um, Filter again. Yeah. If you <laughs> filter by again, let's have a look. There we are. Boom. Cool. Um, yeah, so okay, we have O Capital. Yeah. Alameda. I think we'll have a look at O 
Oahu uh, in a bit. They've done a lot of um, stablecoin movements over the last uh, week or so, like very actively. Uh, I put a tweet about that as well. Um, not entirely clear, I have to say, like what they're actually doing. Uh, it just kind of stood out as peculiar. <laughs> a lot of like USDC, USDT, and then, yeah, the USDD uh, token being moved about. And like we did that whole report on... Um, the UST kind of DPEG and they were a big party in that. So it's kind of something to keep an eye on. They're very, clearly very like smart in arbitrage uh, opportunities. Uh, so definitely want to track. Yeah, no, totally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm just going to clear that filter for a second. See like maybe what's on here as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you can see it's like sorted by value. Um, yeah, actually, um, Arrakis is here. Uh, so Arrakis Finance is actually a really interesting uh, project. Are, are you familiar? No, I've never heard uh, of it. So it's actually, um, yeah, it's an automated Uniswap V3 liquidity manager. Um, but yeah, it, it was actually an initial product. It was called GUni. It was from a Gelato network, which is like a automation protocol. So like, uh, you know, they pretty much have like this like bot infrastructure for a bunch of different DeFi apps, you know, I think for like setting limit orders or... Um, you know, more efficient liquidations and stuff like that. So they're kind of like in the background. But one of their like flagship products was GUni. Um, they recently rebranded to Arrakis Finance. Um, so I think that was like voted on by the gel token holders. Um, and yeah, uh, they actually have like a lot, a lot of traction, uh, which is really, really interesting um, for Unity 3. Um, and they're, they announced that, that uh, they're doing a stake drop. I think it ended last week. Um, but essentially, they'll have this spice token. So I think it's like a, uh, inspired by Dune um, <laughs> with the uh, Arrakis and the who, like, then they have some quotes like, they who control the spice control the galaxy. <laughs> um, and <laughs> yeah, I think it brings this like interesting dynamic of like, hey, if you know, uh, you have like this equivalent of the curve wars, um, you can essentially have these Uniswap wars. And I think like as we see, you know, Uniswap V3 becoming really dominant, whether it be for like, you know, uh, stable coin trading, et cetera, being able to kind of like use this spice token to direct flows, fees, et cetera. It can kind of be similar to like the convex play was to curve. I think that might be interesting. Um, so the, we released the, like a farming report on it last month, or yeah, like early May mm -hmm. um, to our alpha community. And yeah, they, they, they're deployed on Polygon as well. And I think, uh, yeah, I think Polygon was actually offering incentives as well, Matic token. So, um, yeah, it was a pretty good pretty good uh, uh, way to park some stables. Um, but it's interesting because, um, yeah, I think the, like, you know, it, it kind of offers a way for, you know, retail to participate in Unity 3. And it takes those, you know, NFT uh, as that you post as a position, and it kind of like tokenizes it and you can kind of use that as productive capital um, in other protocols. So, you know, you could deposit like, you know, Arrakis DAI USDC LP um, as collateral on MakerDAO um, and borrow against it. So, yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, I think it, it's a pretty interesting protocol. Um, and I think this stake drop, I think Spice will be unlocked in September. But yeah, definitely something to check out. Um, so is this relatively new then? How have I not heard of it? So Arrakis Finance itself um, rebranded relatively recently, but Gelato has actually been around for a while. Um, and the G-Uni product, which was formerly known as, has been also around for like, I think over a year now. Um, yeah, I think they were like audited and stuff as the G-Uni um, product, but I think it's the same code base. Um, but yeah, definitely check them out. Yeah, there's like 1.4. One four billion total value locked. It's been like quite literally up only um, with their yeah TVL, especially after deploying on Polygon. I think so. Yeah, like wherever like Uni V three uh, is deployed, um, yeah, you probably expect to see Arrakis as well there. Yeah, but pretty Someone interesting. Says, uh, you're shilling Arrakis hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I, I'm not involved in the stake drop, and <laughs> but uh, <laughs> pretty pretty interesting. Um, yeah. But to hear the phrase up only uh, in any context as well is uh, unique at the moment. <laughs> but yeah. one thing, the TVL was uh, surprising as well. I didn't expect that. Yeah, it might, 
I have to look into it more, but I would speculate it would be a lot of stable coins. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. Kind of grab that from Stablecoin Master anyway. Drift mm -hmm. it off. <laughs> I, but, I thought as well, uh, we have notes like around this topic um, about like Tomb Finance. I, again, uh, I'm a bit of a noob on that. Uh, but is it in hot contracts? Uh, I think you found it or something. Yeah, yeah, let's see. So, um, oh, it's at the top there. Yeah, yeah. So, usually, yeah, you usually head over to hot contracts. There's a little multi chain hot contract view. I think, uh, yeah, this will be with this load. Um, I saw this, I think, this morning, um, just sorting by the daily inflows. Um, here, yeah, we can see Tomb Finance lift three Genesis pools. Um, and yeah, we see seven smart money depositors in the last day. And you know, 5 million uh, inflows, um, which, yeah, I think in, you know, compared to the rest of the flows, that's pretty significant, especially on like lower volume days um, in relation to like DeFi activity. Um, so yeah, like, you know, you can kind of like drill down into this and like follow a profiler. Um, personally, these inflows indicate like maybe there was an announcement of something. So here, you know, we see T-Share, USDC, you know, just, yeah, um, not sure what it is. Um, so usually I like to actually head over to Twitter and look up like, okay, um, maybe there were some updates uh, with Tomb Finance. Maybe it might be like, I don't know, a new upgrade, new pools, yield farming, whatever it might be, um, and kind of check that out. Um, what was it? Tomb. Let's check them out. Tomb Finance. So I think those are actually not them. <laughs> Tomb Okay, we'll, we will go to CoinGecko. <laughs> um, there There's always a lot of uh, money flow through Phantom uh, projects. They always seem to have like something on the hot project, uh, hot contracts tab. Often a spooky swap, though. Yeah, yeah, totally. They they definitely are. Um, yeah, they definitely have been really dominant um, since mm. the multi chain hot contracts for sure. Um, but yeah, we finally found Tomb. Here we are. Um, I think this is their Twitter account, I'm going to assume so. Um, but yeah, I just kind of scroll down and see like, okay, maybe, maybe they release some new upgrades or whatever it might be. Um, not seeing anything yet. Um, okay, here we are. We see a cemetery V2 Genesis. Yeah, we, okay. We see a bunch of updates. Um, I think I can scroll down and see. Okay. We see our lift three, likely our, the same pool we found. Um, and yeah, okay, single, we can start single-sided staking 11 different assets to earn lift three. Okay, cool. Um, oh, and they even have a, an overview. I don't know if you could see this, if this is clear enough. I can zoom in here. Um, it looks like these Genesis pools, this is posted from yesterday. Um, and we have not, not, I've not audited or checked out the protocol. But yeah, I mean, it looks like almost 30% in USDC yesterday and yeah, some pretty some relatively higher APRs. Um, yeah, especially in these conditions, but I've not yeah. checked this out. <laughs> I'm not sure if you know anything more about them. No, I think the old me and I'm sure the old, a lot of people would have been like, oh, 30%. Like, <laughs> <that's good." laughs> uh, but now I see 30% and I'm like, oh, maybe let's not do that. But yeah, I haven't done any research into Tomb Finance. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> but it might be interesting, especially if it's a, Showing up as a hot contract, there's a lot of smart money uh, entrance, right? Uh, so yeah, it might just yeah, yeah it. seven in the last day, which I mean, compared to the rest, I think that yeah, that's top um, right now compared to the rest. Um, yeah, and it's, it looks like they're still generating some inflows. So you know, you can obviously just drill down to the specific wallet profile, which we did here. Um, and if you're curious and looking at USDC, um, you can actually just like drill down um, more here and see maybe like who. What specific actors are you know sending funds and here you can kind of like do the same little smart money uh emoji i gotta actually get that again uh, where is it we'll get it from three arrows sorry i always lose track of this little emoji do you have like a little alpha hack on how to better keep track of it <laughs> uh, i think i have it in my notes uh, <laughs> but yeah yeah and sorry i just navigated back to um uh, yeah, the, these Tomb Finance Lift 3 Genesis pools um, mm -hmm. for USDC, as I'm sure there's a lot of USDC bowls out here. 
Um, and here we can just click in like the counterparty as smart money. Um, and here, yeah, you can see PSYOP Farmer and Kresno. Um, so yeah, um, not too much activity. I'm not sure where the other smart money, I think they might probably be in other pools, but yeah, it's just interesting that you can kind of drill down and look to see when some of these people might've entered these pools and stuff. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they would, oh yeah, they must be in the other pools. I don't know why there's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think like a majority was like T-share and maybe some other like phantom tokens like Tomb. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, well, that's an interesting little gem. It's kind of nice to see any kind of DeFi um, <laughs> doing well <laughs> at the moment. Uh, so yeah, I'd want to check out. Uh, I think I think we also want to have a look at kind of the airdrop pro tags. And I think because you're on the alpha team, alpha team always has uh, some amazing information about airdrops uh, that I don't have either. Uh, so yeah, always interested to hear uh, about that. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I think, uh, yeah, I might have tuned in last week. Uh, and I think uh, Daniel and Sandra might have touched up on it a bit. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of going back to like, I think, um, oh, our data journalist Martin put out uh, this great, like, what do all of our labels mean, which I always come back to as the number of labels continue to increase, which is really, really great. Um, and if you kind of scroll down here to smart money wallet labels, you'll see we have, where is it? Airdrop Pro as our most recent one. And essentially it's, um, yeah, any address that has received, you know, a significant amount of tokens across a number of different airdrops that have been, you know, um, yield a lot in terms of USD value. And yeah, those airdrops um, are actually valued on a 30 day average after the actual distribution. So um, this is pretty fun. Um, yeah, the attribution team, I had the privilege of working a little bit with the attribution team on this. Um, and yeah, we, we pretty much like the methodology was, I can actually pull up the specific report. Um, let me open that up actually real quick. Mm -hmm. um, Air dropper report. Here we are. Um, yeah, I think this might've been chilled last week. Um, but yeah, we, we actually had this like uh, methodology where we kind of went through and looked at the, yeah, the highest uh, airdrops um, by USD value that were on Ethereum. So I think it was around like 15, we narrowed it down to, and then pretty much like, okay, we want the most high signal um, risk, like wallets. So um, yeah, we pretty much filtered by like having like how many uh, of the airdrops we received, so, you know, so obviously one person could have farmed like, I don't know, millions of dollars of uni way back in the day, but um, might not be active in 2022. And hence, you know, isn't too, yeah, actionable or too, not too uh, high signal. So yeah. Yeah, it went through a lot of different filters. And then, yeah, and then we came to the airdrop pro tag, which is really, really interesting. And um, essentially this report, um, we kind of wanted to look at the top counterparty contracts um, from these, you know, current airdrop pro wallets. And I think it's like, I think a lot of people, there's like tons of threads on speculating on different airdrops and stuff. But I think, and I think, yeah, I think a lot of people would appreciate actually kind of like quantitatively following what the airdrop pro wallets are doing. And it, uh, yeah, it, it might, uh, I guess, like follow suit with some of the speculation on what airdrops are uh, there, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to scroll in here. Uh, this little visualization of like the top interacting contracts. So we have like Arbitrum, we have Genie, Genie Swap, MetaMask Swaps. Wormhole, Euler, ZK Sync, uh, Foundation, Gnosis, across protocol. Um, and yeah, it's sorted by the count of the airdrop pro wallets. Um, and yeah, I think it's uh, it's pretty interesting. And in, in terms of this, this is not available on the Nansen AI dashboards, but you can actually, like an alpha leak is to really kind of look at what speculative airdrops there are. And if there's like a specific bridge, let's just say like, I don't know, to ZK Sync or to Aztec Network, if that's something that you might be speculating on, um, you can always just use the top depositors dashboard um, and then use that little smart money emoji like uh, you've pointed out. I think there's a lot of uh, alpha in that. And then kind of look at like, okay, what's the distribution of uh, Airdrop Pro wallets depositing funds here? And is that like some signal there? So that's a pretty interesting way to use the Airdrop Pro wallets as well as looking at like, what are the counterparty contracts? So you can kind of drill into each specific wallet. 
and look at like, hey, what what is this wallet doing? Uh, what are the top counterparty contracts? And do they have a token? If not, you know, and kind of come up with your own frameworks from there. Um, but yeah, where this report came in is kind of like, a, yeah, di digesting this data and kind of creating a framework. Um, so I guess like one more thing I'll show is I think like last week they might've showed this little table, but um, yeah, it's pretty much just like a bunch of different protocols sorted by the distinct airdrop pro count um, per each of the top contracts. So obviously, you know, it's the Arbitrum inbox, um, the swaps contract for MetaMask, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, we kind of give like associated, you know, dashboards as well as, you know, guides. Um, and these are obviously all speculative. It's not financial advice. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty interesting to look um, based in the view of the airdrop pro tag. And I think the the most memeable and like funny way of looking at it is actually looking at the notable wallets. So as you can tell, a lot of these wallets have definitely made a lot of money. Um, so we wanted to see like, okay, let's sort by the total USD um, received by these wallets. And we'll take the top ones. And then we'll also take the um, USD value made per each transaction. And here, if we scroll down, we can see some interesting wallets. Um, so here, I mean, it's pretty astounding. Analytico.eth across. So to, to be clear, these airdrops that we did was sort of by like the highest value airdrops. Um, so like obviously not all airdrops yield the same um, rewards. I think some are obviously more profitable than others. Um, and yeah, we can kind of see here across the, you know, the ones we measured, um, you know, this wallet has made $23.5 million on airdrops and <laughs> like an average of like 2.3 thousand per transaction. And that's like across the six, like six of the airdrops we tracked. Which I think is like, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty good just by being like an early user of protocols and stuff. So maybe 23 and a half million signals, this wallet might know something. Um. <laughs> that's insane. I think it's also like important um, not only to kind of see what protocols they're using, uh, but like also to kind of follow what they do with their airdrops. Um, I think I've been intending to write kind of a thread on this, but I know that there's a lot of, uh, it's like well recognized now that like, Three day rule of don't say uh, don't sell your airdrop until three days. Three days, but now everyone already knows about that, so you get front run <laughs> <laughs> on the second day. Uh, but yeah, so the labels are like really helpful in both ways. Like one to kind of see what they're doing, uh, and then two to see how they approach it. And I, I know this won't come up in like this category of airdrop, um, but like looking at that twenty three million dollars, I remember uh, Dingaling getting like some astonishing amount of ape coin um it was like oh. 50 million or something more than that that was insane it won't be worth that now uh but yeah that was the biggest i've ever seen yeah and so the funny thing is this actually came out before ape coin okay. um so the actual wallet label so um yeah it, it might be it, it probably doesn't have that, um, at least here with these specific wallets that we have tracked. So yeah, there's probably a lot other really, really crazy, um, yeah, ape, I think the ape airdrop especially made a lot of people, yeah, tons of tons of funds. Yeah, loads of money. I, I think that's a good point. Like this is a bit off topic, but uh, with like board apes, uh, obviously at the moment they're back under 100 grand, everyone's memeing on it, uh, including me. <laughs> but in reality, like the people who, or at least like semi smart with the ape have like made tons off the airdrop. They had mutants, the dogs, everything. So you should easily by now have like cut your um, initial investment um, out. I should be riding it. Yeah. So apes have made tons as long as as long as they kind of did it kind of smartly. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's interesting as well. Like looking at those names. Um, Obviously, some of them, big dick .eth. <laughs> but poap.eth, it's not by any chance the founder, is it? I forget his name. Uh, but oh, let's see. Surprised. Oh, it's just, oh, hold on. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> poap.eth, here we are. Yeah, it seems like there's correlation between, uh, you know, how, like, the the middle school humor of ENS names uh to being really profitable with their job so uh <laughs> yeah i i, I 
Mostly. That is him, uh, by the way. That is the Poe app. Uh, nice. Uh, yeah, Tristio. Yeah, so this is an interesting wallet. Um, mm-hmm. They like to own a couple ENS names. I think, from memory, he. Um, if you go on, we'll probably go on it and it won't be there now, but if you go on a stable master, stable coin master, and go by top balances, um, yeah, if you notable wallet, scroll down. Should I sort by change? No. Uh, where where does it show um, like the most uh, the wallets with the most stable coins? You know the one that has like Justin Sun and things like this. Um, there's a dashboard for that, but anyway, the the founder of Poap, I'm pretty sure, is like in the top twenty or was in the top twenty for like most stable coins in one wallet. Uh, so he's obviously done well. Uh, for himself I, I don't know the revenue model of poaps um maybe it just i don't know it must be fees but he's done well regardless or he's just an early investor yeah and you can always like um just like if you don't know where it is and you know maybe like the specific stable coin uh you can kind of drill down um here yeah, think- only two million that can't be it then maybe there's a second wallet uh, i definitely have seen him on a leaderboard of some kind Gotcha. Yeah, maybe we can see, like, track that those separate wallets down below once this loads. Maybe there's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's not watching. Uh, <laughs> that's just Dox's wallets. Uh, but yeah, it, it was just a side topic anyway. I've definitely seen him on the leaderboards because that's how I kind of recognize the name. Um, but yeah, no, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. He's there somewhere. Uh, you'll have to go looking. Maybe some belief in BlockFi. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's ETH, but I'm pretty sure it's stables. But anyway, this is yeah. gone off the rails. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we wanted to look at, uh, more interestingly, probably, uh, well, we've got two things. We can look at the injective protocol, um, and then I think we also just want to cover like the USDD and maybe some some of the unlocks. I, I'd like to have a quick look if we get time at the. Um, at the DAO Paradise feature that we've got, um, because I think there is some interesting stuff there that I'd like to kind of bring up, and I'm sure you know uh, as well. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I guess we can like, so yeah, Injective Protocol is this, for those who don't know, is this um, uh, order book exchange built out on Cosmos, but uh, essentially they released their token, INJ, as an ERC-20 way back when, um, I mean, there was a lot of notable investors and essentially there's this, um, bridge that I'm sure we will find out. So, um, but yeah, it's a pretty cool change. Actually, I think there might've been some buzz around, I think they made a perp on eight, on, eight, on, uh, yeah, board apes. So, um, I think it's only available for people outside the U S so I can't access it, but, um, yeah, I think that was something that was pretty interesting, but I think there was like extremely low volume. So, um, yeah, definitely do your own research there, but still interesting nonetheless. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah um so yeah i guess here we have like injective tokens so obviously it's an erc20 um as well as you know it's an issue natively on their specific chain as well but um yeah i mean we can kind of look here um seems to be a little down only recently in like you know in tune with the markets mm-hmm. um but usually what i like doing with token gamma is kind of just heading over to token distribution um it looks like he's in pretty flat line with this smart money number of smart money wallets actually holding the token. Um, and yeah, kind of scrolling down to like top balances, we can kind of see the second uh, wallet here is actually the injective protocol bridge. So we just like right click and go to wallet profiler um, and actually just kind of see like what is the balance of this bridge? Like what are people actually bridging? And it looks here that like the significant amount is actually injective token itself. Um, so the reason why I guess like I wanted to bring this up is not because of you know specifically the uh, board Aves perp, but actually to kind of see how you can use Nansen to explore interesting wallets that might of chains that might not be supported yet. So obviously we don't support injective protocol, but we can obviously see people bridging from mainnet, and from there um, you can find some interesting things. So um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this bridge wallet at the top and head over to the top depositors dashboard. And we'll just input that there. And obviously because Inge was, or INJ was the most popular bridge token, 
we'll just like click show depositors. And the reason why I want to do this is because like, yeah, I think there's a lot of alpha to be had by checking out early bridgers, sort of say, so like the bridge overs, you know, and I, yeah, and depending on uh, where you are, you can find some interesting stuff. Um, so here, you know, we just loaded up, um, you know, we could see, you know, net tokens deposited um, since this bridge has been live, you know, we see some, you know, smart money wallets as well. And what's interesting is like, you know, we see Pantera, QCP, um, private sale investor. So, you know, the next thing I would be like, okay, who are the investors in, you know, injective? So I'm just going to like open up a new tab. There's an injective protocol investors. Um, we'll just scroll down. Okay. Um, and here we see Pantera who just showed up, Block Tower, um, CMS, QCP, as well as Mark Cuban. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think like you can kind of see, okay, uh, that, that makes sense. It looks like um, a lot of our investors are here. But what's interesting is if you just use this data filter button um, and you do transactions in and pretty much you can be like, hey, I want to see who were the you know first depositors in the first month that this bridge went live. So let me actually see when this bridge went live. I think it was fall 2021. Um, and yeah, okay. So it looks like this is straight from Injective. This is from September 14th. So yeah, we'll call it, we'll call it September 14th. We can do it for the first month. So we're just going to navigate back to the top depositors and yeah, like I'll just restart here. Just went to the data filter button and then this transaction's in, you can just do less than, and we'll just do 2021 and you know, a month after 914 is 1014. So we'll just do October 14th, 2021. And this will pretty much sort. Oh, I don't think it went. Um, transactions in 2021 and 14. Hmm. Wait, that's not loading for me. I think I had that error yesterday as well. Uh, might be a oh, bug. Here we are. We'll do first in, I guess. Yeah, that makes that makes more sense. Sorry. It, yeah, this this makes more sense. Ignore what I was doing before. Um because we want to see who was first in. Okay, there we go. Um yeah, and here now you can actually see who was, you know, using this bridge in the first month of deployment. And from here you can kind of get some interesting wallets. So obviously we have some overlap with the investors. Obviously, they um seem to be using the bridge. Um and yeah, we see Binance. Binance was also in there um, as well as an investor. And you can kind of scroll down and just be like, hey, these are the early degens in, you know, injective protocol, maybe like the Cosmos ecosystem. So could be some interesting wallet. There's, there's Mark Cuban on that first page. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. His wallet. I thought yeah, yeah. left after, was it Raid Finance? That was Mark Cuban, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was, <laughs> yeah, the Algo stable. I haven't heard <laughs> of him since <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so that's actually funny i didn't even see mark Cuban, and, and yeah he is also an investor um mm. yeah it looks like there's not too much going on here in terms of anything um yeah, yeah. i don't know if he just left crypto altogether um very possible uh i just don't hear anything about mark cuban anymore or, or <laughs> i'm just not following him uh yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. It got rugged and then call, uh, called the regulators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, unfortunate for him. Uh, so, yeah, let's have a look because we're running out of time. At, uh, USDD. on yeah. I haven't looked at this because um, I wanted it to be a surprise <laughs> for this episode. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> it looks like the volume went through price um, here, which... Yeah. You look at it, pretty, pretty, pretty insane volume yesterday or two days ago. Um, yeah, um, it's just insane, isn't it? Um, <laughs> on the end. If you want to um, kind of keep track or have a look at what Justin was doing, um, Andrew Furman, who works for us, amazing uh, kind of writer and amazing at doing these kind of research things. Uh, he wrote some threads. So definitely check them out. I thought they were really interesting. He was right on him, as I'm sure Justin's son wasn't happy <laughs> about, but he probably didn't see it anyway. Uh, but yeah, I, I think we 
if you have a look there, even in our notes, we've got that he's like vast majority holder. So if you, yeah, here we are. Yeah, there's two wallets there as well. Yeah, and 13%. So yeah, <laughs> over, yeah, 42%. Uh, 42% yeah, of so the supply pretty crazy yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> over 50% of the supply um, yeah pretty nuts and if you look at this like chart here at the top the tokens held by smart money wallets um, and you look at the number it's just one smart money wallet um, curious to see who that is we could, we could probably drill down on that and then we could see as of yesterday it's just in some yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> and then it might be another oh okay now we see o capital oh this is what you were uh saying oh yeah yeah so i, I did we touch on it briefly because uh it's not entirely sure actually what they were doing but it's just kind of interesting o yeah. capital, uh we're doing like really active trades of stable coins i put a tweet out about it um usdd usdc usdt like super active yeah, uh, yeah. we yeah, kind of labeled them as to say, um, as one of the influential parties in the UST DPEG. Um, so yeah, when I saw them moving USDD around, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, I don't know, nothing ever, nothing came from it. I, I think the USDD DPEGed actually this morning as well. Um, yeah, I see that I, here. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. There you go. Um, but not, drastically but i don't know it seems kind of not a great situation like it reminds me of the terror uh one where like do do Kwon would go to sleep um <laughs> and then they would deep peg it um and the same thing with justin sun it seems like justin sun goes to sleep let's deep peg it <laughs> um but yeah i don't know who knows it's it's all uh really complex to kind of understand how these things deep peg specifically anyway um so yeah I think we'll probably do research report into that as well if it happens um uh, obviously a horrible i'm not laughing because it's a horrible situation especially if you're at it um but it's just kind of like surely we're not going to have this situation again but it's, it's possible um so who knows um and yeah let's have a look as well at the celsius token i'm sure we'll do i think alex mentioned we'll probably do a kind of research report on Celsius as well uh, to see what's been happening with them. Because um, there's a lot of like, you know, same thing with the terror, uh, you kind of grasping for answers because you're like, what's going on? Often your answer is the wrong one. Um, and that's me as well. So mine might be wrong about uh, USDD. Uh, so we kind of do these analytical reports to kind of find the actual answer. Uh, yeah, and luckily, Celsius token is an ERC20, so we have a lot of data on it. Someone says it's sad what's happening to free AC, and I think it is sad as well. I agree. Hopefully yeah. they don't you know, go under. A lot of good um, contributors and, you know, VCs and, um, yeah, just general market participants. So I hope everyone's Safu. Um, it's generally like a lot of contagion and pretty unforeseen circumstances. So, yeah, like as much as we might be joking around, I feel like, yeah. Okay. definitely yeah. exercise caution um i think it's one of them where like it is it's horrible but if you actually take in how horrible it is it's like too <laughs> too much so you have to create some jokes for it but it is a terrible situation for people yeah. and for people like holding any coin at the moment so yeah hopefully people are okay and can like take some breaks from looking at charts or anything but yeah let's have a look at the celsius token yeah so it looks like there's all these Celsius wallets that are the top holders. Um, looks like to be a significant amount. <laughs> um, and then their main wallet, it looks like there's a lot of activity here. Um, yeah, I mean, let's see. Balance changes, if we can sort by, you know, maybe positive changes. So it looks to be just like, yeah, centralized exchanges, Celsius themselves. How much is the Celsius, uh, Celsius token? worth so we know I think how much it is let's go to change it 64 cents okay um but i remember i think yesterday yeah i think it was at like was it 28 cents or maybe yeah. lower so um yeah pretty, pretty brutal people got a 2x off that though it's like a 100 percent gain it's like the one thing that you could make money from uh i did <laughs> um, yeah 
<laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm actually not too familiar with like the sell token. I know there's like a buyback program, I believe, um, where you can kind of like stake, sell, and earn maybe more rewards on the Celsius platform. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, interesting here. I think it looks like they own a lot of the supply, um, as we're seeing. Um, yeah, the one thing with Celsius, because I was like trying to have a look at their stablecoin movements as well, is they've got loads of wallets, uh, loads and loads. So it's like really hard. Like, I know people on Twitter maybe want like, tell us what's going on but it's and people do of course but it's not as easy as just like follow uh celsius because uh they've got so many wallets and they have so many transactions and swaps and things going on it becomes very difficult to follow and also very difficult to put into a tweet thread <laughs> uh, but yeah I, I don't know what the celsius token does either um it's probably like lower fees or something if you hold it one of those incentive um tokens i don't know i can't really think why they'd need one everyone has a token for some reason uh it might be one of them situations but yeah i'm not sure yeah hope everyone is safu though i know yeah they paused withdrawal so i have a couple of friends that might have been affected really oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. i imagine there's loads it's kind of actually maybe bigger um than terror uh going down really well probably a lot more money involved than maybe people think. Um, I guess we'll find out. It seems like they're clawing back, but you can never tell. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I think, like, a lot of people are definitely, um, you got margin called, and mm -hmm. they now have to make the decision between, like, do I top up this loan um, so I don't get liquidated? But if I do that, am I going to receive my funds back given I can't withdraw them? So there's like kind of like this dilemma, like do I get liquidated or do I add into, you know, what could potentially be, you know, I don't receive any of it. So it's like, yeah, I think that's a pretty hard um, position to be in with people with open loans and stuff. So especially that are at risk of liquidation. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we're going to have to rush through. Sorry if we didn't look at some of the stuff enough. We've only got an hour-ish. Uh, let's have a look at Dow. Paradise is kind of a feature we haven't fully explained yet on Twitter. I know we're just kind of working through some stuff, but we thought we could give like a, a sneak peek into what it's uh, about. And I think if you just kind of give a general um, look at it, but also uh, for BitDAO, I thought what was interesting, and I, I know that we're like still making sure the data is uh, accurate. So don't uh, have like full faith in it yet because it's still in like beta, I believe. But if you have a look at BitDAO specifically and click on them, we have like a DAO God mode or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go, DAO God mode. You can see their treasury has been like obliterated um, in USD value on the right hand side there. Yeah. So it's gone from like 11 billion uh, late January to now uh, 3 billion around that. Um, so lost like 60% of its treasury value which is not ideal, uh, but is a sign of the times and just like in the general trend with the market. But it's kind of shocking to see that. When I saw that, that's kind of insane. Like $7 billion uh, wiped. Yeah, Oof. that's pretty oh. tough. I do like this voting power, like the smart money voting power line here. Mm. I think that's, that'd be really nice. <laughs> Looks like a flat line here, but still pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think we're like kind of hoping and I believe you. I'll, we'll have like more tweets out about it, so we'll have more details. But I think you can kind of submit um, to have your DAO on this leaderboard, or not leaderboard, kind of more just uh, dashboard uh, to kind of show what's going on. So if you go back onto DAO Paradise, we can get like a more yeah. general overview of the ones that we currently have. But obviously, there's a load more. Um, I saw Woo Network tweeted to have Woo DAO. I think it is it's like simple name uh, on there. I don't think we have them yet. So there's a, a lot still to add. But I thought it was like really, really interesting feature to kind of see how each DAO is getting on. Um, yeah, there's not much data on that otherwise. Yeah, totally. And hope, like, yeah, hope there's like some effective DAO treasury management and stuff as, yeah, because it, it definitely is pretty brutal to go, yeah, to lose like seven bill um, in your treasury for sure. 
So mm. <laughs> well, maybe, I don't know, uh, don't quote me on this, but it could become like a tool for DAOs um, yeah. to kind of see how other DAOs then are uh, mag- managing their treasury. Um, and then you can kind of learn from their um, good traits and obviously their mistakes as well. Um, so if there's like a really well-run DAO, surely you could come on, use Nansen, see how they're kind of managing it, um, and then learn from that as well. Um, because, yeah, you don't want to lose 60%, 70%. Um, it, w- it would be interesting to kind of see what they held. It probably... What bit DAO is this a stupid question, but is it just going to mainly be Bitcoin? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I actually don't know what they'd hold. Uh, I don't know enough about BitDAO. Um, yeah, it looks to be like mostly Bit token. Like their own, yeah. Yeah, and you could actually. I, I don't think we have enough time today, but <laughs> if you actually check through BitDAO, um, you'll see they actually have like a, a vesting contract that you can get. So there's a little alpha leak. Um, mm. I think it's like the 14th or 15th of every month, and you can kind of see flows if you just sort by smart money you'll get the investing contract, which is something interesting to track as well, if that's mm. what you're checking out. Yeah, because if you're down 60, 70%, actually it makes sense. There's like an altcoin, but I don't know, everything's down 60, 70%, <laughs> so maybe not. Uh, but yeah, I think that will be a really good feature as like we kind of build it up as well. Um, we'll have more information on it soon. Uh, so this is like kind of like an alpha leak. Um, and yeah, I think it'll be a really good one to add. On top of the feature that we spoke about earlier, uh, Nansen Connect, and I'm sure we're going to be chilling all the, a load more amazing stuff, uh, or definitely will be, over the kind of next few months. Even though the market's down, we continue. We are an amazing company <laughs> because we just continue to keep going um, and kind of sh- putting forward these amazing features. So yeah, check out Nansen Connect. Uh, we will be at, um, adding more accessibility. Uh, to like every member eventually, but I believe at the moment it's only for uh, subscriptions. Um, and then if you have one of the NFTs that we're kind of going to be announcing over the next couple of days, um, yeah, you'll get access to those channels, but we should be able to kind of make it more and more open over time. We just didn't want to overload the platform and not make it a good experience for everyone. Uh, yeah, but we're really excited about this. I think there'll be a lot of like learning. Um, I'm sure there'll be some mistakes and whatever, but that's part of the process of like a innovative uh, kind of release. So yeah, I probably waffled on there. But thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Jake, for joining. Um, you say that you're dumb money, but you have some good uh, tips. <laughs> uh, so hopefully, yeah, people got some tips from that as well. Uh, and then enjoyed the Nansen Connect part that we had at the start. So that is a wrap for today. 77 office hours we have done. Um, If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it. Uh, I'm sure we'll be sharing some clips from it as well. Uh, Remember to subscribe, turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything. Uh, Sign up to Nansen Lite below if you want to try out Nansen for yourself for free. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Don't look at charts all day. I hope you're all okay. Uh, we're all suffering together. And yeah, thank you for joining. And we'll probably see you next week. Well, hopefully. Yeah, thank you, Jake. We're done. Take care, everyone.